That nerds. So ChatGPT's code interpreter just came out and it can do some pretty impressive things. Say I upload this spreadsheet for my boss and ask this chatbot to analyze it. It not only can provide a text-based analysis, but also can generate graphs like this to visualize data, which is almost like having my own analyst assistant. But for my job as a data analyst, this tool is already obsolete as I can't do even the most simple tasks that I need to do for my job. Yes, I can upload a file, but this one that has over 200,000 rows won't even upload. It says it's too big. If I have my data online like Google Sheets and ask it to connect, it tells me it's unable to do this for Google Sheets or any external web services. Oh, and don't even get me started if I need to connect to something like a database where I normally store my data. So this can't even do the first part of my job of connecting to data, but I think I found a solution with a plugin called Notable. And this allows me to use that same model of code interpreter that I've found to be pretty damn impressive in analyzing data, but also unlocks other capabilities that code interpreter is incapable of, like actually connecting to things I need for my job, like the internet, larger files, and even databases. Well, that's at least the claim of this plugin. So we're gonna be testing all of these different features today and seeing how I use them in my job as a data analyst. One note, this video is not sponsored by Notable. I don't even think they know that I'm making this video, but it is supported by those of you that use the links that I have below in the description. Editor Luke here, one note. So for the chat GPT usage, this is gonna require the plus version in order to access those plugins or access code interpreter. So it's not free. I'm not sponsored by OpenAI or ChatGPT, but I wanted you to know. All right, back to real Luke. All right, with that, let's actually connect to a large ass data set. And this data set is over 20 gigabytes of data. Not a chance code interpreter could handle this. Let's start with a new chat and install the plugin by going to the plugin store. I click install and it provides a new window to sign up into Notable. I just use my same Google account that I use for ChatGPT. Let's prompt it to see how I connect to this large ass data set. And this is a BigQuery database. It provides a link directing me back into Notable where I input my credentials in a secure portion that ChatGPT he doesn't have access to, which I'm much more comfortable with this vice giving ChatGPT my credentials and it potentially being leaked to other users. So now all I have to do is prompt it to see if we're connected to the database by asking it to provide a list of tables in this data set. And it looks like we're connected, which is pretty cool. So we have ChatGPT, this chatbot, now connected to my database with over 20 gigabytes of data. It's pretty insane. And so we've already solved this major issue that I've had with Code Interpreter. But I don't wanna stop there. I wanna now see how it performs at actually analyzing data. In my last video, where I first compared these tools, Code Interpreter was performing a more robust EDA, not only focused on descriptive statistics, but also on visualizations. So I'm all about second chances. Let's prompt Notable to perform some EDA. It starts strong by providing some descriptive statistics about the different columns in the data set, which is on data science job postings. It then goes into visualizing what are the top jobs. Finding data engineers, scientists, analysts have the most job postings. But then it stops after this and asks how to proceed. And it provides some recommended areas on where to go next. Oddly enough, when I did this previously with Code Interpreter, it dove into those columns without any prompting. But to be honest, I wasn't really interested in some of the insights it provided. So I'm kind of liking how this notable plugin is asking where to go next. So let's move on to exploring something I do care about, salary. So after prompting it and getting this useless graph then reprompting it and reprompting it once again, I finally got this visualization, which is okay. But as we saw previously, we have a number of different jobs. So this isn't really useful. Instead, I guided it further, asking it to analyze what were the different salaries for the top job titles. And we can see that senior roles are higher paying, and luckily data analysts aren't last. So in general, ChatGPT needs a human operator to guide it on where to perform the analysis next. Anyway, where is all this analysis actually being performed? Well, at the beginning of this chat session, I was provided a link to a notebook. And inside this environment is where ChatGPT is writing and running all that code. And this documents all the different steps that we took with building these visualizations. Once it gets the results, it then sends it from here back to you in the chat. One note, I'm using custom instructions in order to better document my analysis through markdown cells. When I don't document, I go back and I'm pretty much clueless on what I did. So this is good at saving my ass. With this saved notebook, you can even take it a step further by sharing and collaborating with others. 
this has a huge benefit. Now ChatGPT has timeout issues to where when you wanna go back into a chat session a day later to see your work, all of your graphs just disappear. Bruh. And this is annoying AF, especially when you wanna go back and share some of the results that you found with your colleagues. Also, because of these timeout issues, you can't just pick up where you left off in ChatGPT. You basically have to start over in a new chat which I feel is like starting with a brand new data analyst every single time, that's a separate subject. But with the Notable plugin, because your work is saved in this notebook, you can prompt ChatGPT in a new window to pick back up where you left off. All right, I digress. That's enough shitting on Code Interpreter. So this Notable plugin, is it perfect? Well, I'd be lying to you if I said it was. I've experienced a number of growing pains using it. And actually, let me show you. So interactions between <laughs> that was weird. So interactions between ChatGPT and Notable are really less than perfect. So let's say I have an analysis I want to perform and I go to this Notable plugin and ask it to do it. I'll frequently get told by ChatGPT that it's not capable of doing this and then providing me the code in order to do it myself. It's extremely annoying, especially when I've done this similar analysis before with the plugin. It's almost like ChatGPT is gaslighting me. The other issue, which is specific to Notable, is that it'll get in these infinite loops and it'll keep going back and forth saying it can't do a certain analysis. When I actually inspect the Notable notebook, I find out it's just not executing the cell. It's really freaking annoying. So I have to just go into the cell and click play in order to resume what it was doing. And then it gets back on track. The last major issues with plugins is that ChatGPT is never consistent with how good of a programmer it is. Sometimes it's an expert programmer provides great codes. Other time, it is awful. So my solution to all these are just to start a new chat. And the last, last major issue is around security, which a lot of y'all have issues with. ChatGPT, not so good at handling secure data. You see, OpenAI has been really vocal lately that they're not using your data to train models through their API. But that's the API. When you actually look at ChatGPT, they are using it for this. And if you don't want them to use your data, you have to turn it off in the chat history. Even with turning this setting off, I think users are still freaked out about the security of their data within this application. And so if you're scared about putting it in, just don't put it in, especially if it's HIPAA protected data. All right, enough with the green screen. Let's get back to the analysis. So let's actually test this bad boy and see if we can break it. And for this, like all the previous analysis, we're gonna stay on Notable's free tier. Yes, they do have a paid plan to get bigger computers. Apparently they saw my last video where I complained about the small ass computers. And they now have larger ones, including GPUs. However, you gotta pay for them. But testing Notable in preparation for this video, I think OpenAI has improved their GPT-4 model as this code is much more efficient and I was able to stay on the free tier the entire time. So unless you have a huge ass data set or one GPU support, then I think you're good with the free tier. Anyway, about that visualization. Now I've been making simple bar charts and graphs that really any junior data analyst could do. And honestly, that's all I thought ChatGPT was really capable of. So let's actually try something harder. I asked ChatGPT to generate a visualization for the top skills for the four most popular data science jobs. It ended up showing me this for data engineers, scientists, analysts, and business analysts. But I'm not really satisfied. It's really hard for me to see how certain skills hmm? translate across hmm? these roles. Also, some skills like PowerPoint what? aren't even in the top 10 of others. So how does this all relate? I then provided some criteria of what I wanted out of this visualization and it recommended a heat map. So I told it to get to work. Not gonna lie, this took quite a bit of prompting to actually get what I needed. First, it had issues with missing values, which took multiple prompting to fix. Then the color scale was all jacked up. And so we had to iterate through different palettes. But after a few tiers, we finally got this bad boy, which showed for me how these skills relate. With this, we can see more clearly how important things are like Python and SQL for all data nerds. Also, how data engineers have some of the highest requested skills with its darker coloring. And business analysts have some of the least. And finally, for those that are not data engineers, how they prioritize things like viz tools and spreadsheets. You can see from this how as someone is gaining skills could transition from a business analyst to data analyst and finally data scientist, which is pretty amazing I'm able to visualize this. Oh, and when I look at the code behind this, I'm even more blown away. Not only was I able to write efficient SQL queries to get what we needed, but also some complex Python to get our visualizations. And this would have taken me all day to try to figure out and code. 
But with ChatGPT, I was able to do this in less than an hour. So I'm super impressed by it. Anyway, if you're curious about other skills and other tools that I'm using in ChatGPT besides Notable, check out this video right here. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.